Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm John R. and I'm your instructor. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this ring. Now this is a sterling silver band that is set with a six millimeter round cabochon amethyst stone. The amethyst stone is cut flat on the bottom and domed on the top and it's easily set in place by a very very thin bezel. Now I'm going to show you in this video how to make it to either fit you or your client so that you can have either a fun time wearing it or fill your pocket with money by selling them. All right, let me clear this space and I'll get started showing you how to make it. Okay, I've laid out all of the supplies and tools that you're going to need to make this project. First, you're going to need a stone and you're going to need a bezel cup that fits that stone. In this case I've got a six millimeter amethyst and a six millimeter bezel cup. Now these bezel cups are made out of fine silver. Fine silver has a higher melting temperature than sterling silver. That's why you can get away with soldering something so small and thin to something much larger and thicker. The ring of course comes from the ring project that we made in a different video. Now, what you're going to need is a ring clamp with a wedge. This is for holding the ring while you're filing. I recommend using a zero cut file because it will work faster. Then I'm going to solder the materials together using these tools. I've got a third hand set up with a pair of insulated tweezers. And additionally, I'm going to use a soldering pad on top of a ceramic block. I'm going to use a small butane torch and I have one millimeter square pieces of hard solder ready to be used and along with these I'm going to be using some flux for silver, I have a soldering pick, I have a paintbrush for applying my flux, and I have a pair of tweezers for picking the pieces of silver solder up out of the box and placing them. Now, the last tool here is a bezel rocker. Now this is used in place of a burnisher to actually set the cabochon stone into the bezel cup. All right, the other things I want to point out to you is I have a ventilation system here to evacuate out any fumes that come from the soldering area. I also have a quenching bowl and I have some pickle ready to go and I have a pair of copper tongs to handle the things that go in and out of the pickle. Now, finally, the last thing I want to talk about are these safety glasses. You're going to want to wear these the entire time while you're working on this project. And if you haven't stopped to see our safety video, you might want to pause this video and take a look at the safety video before you proceed. Okay, now that you know all the tools and supplies, let me clear a space and I'll show you the first step to making your ring with your stone on it. Okay, I put some things away and now I'm ready to get started. The first thing that I want to do is I want to prep the bezel cup to be solderable to the ring. Now to do that, what I want to do is I'm going to place the bezel cup on a soldering pad upside down. And I'm going to apply to the back side a small amount of the silver flux. Now this is a handy or dandy flux and it can take a, or withstand a higher temperature. Okay, so we just want to have enough on the back of this just so that the solder can flow. Alright, now setting the paintbrush aside, I'm going to pick up my solder. I'm using hard solder and I want to apply one millimeter square pieces of solder or pallions of solder to the back side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put enough pallions in order to flood this back surface with solder. And I'm doing this right away because I want this to have a chance to clean up in the pickle pot. Now remember the pickle is a mild acid that removes corrosion or oxides from metal surfaces so that you have, don't have any problem soldering. Okay, so let me set these over here and we'll light the torch. This torch is great. There we go. All right, so the first thing you want to do is just dry out the flux. Do this slowly. 
You, don't, you just want to tickle the piece with the flame just to evaporate the water out of the flux. If you do it too fast, you'll actually make the pallions jump off the piece. Right now they're just kind of vibrating and wiggling around. But as soon as that flux is dry, move in with more heat, keep your flame moving, and you want to go until the material melts and puddles on the back surface. There, it's perfect. Okay, turning off the torch, and I'll just use my tweezers to quench it. All right, now this is going to go into our pickle pot. So I'm, but I'm going to set that aside just for now so I can show you the next step with the ring. You're going to want to take your ring and put it into your ring clamp. Now, I'm going to set this in with part of the ring exposed and I'll put the clamp in and to make sure that the clamp is or the wedge is in tight I'm just gonna hit it on top of the disc just like that. Alright, now what I want to do is I want to sit at the bench and I want the V of the bench pin to hold the clamp. So I'm holding with my left hand, I'm taking the file and what I want to do is just Make sure that the file is perpendicular to the top edge of the ring. And I'm just going to file a little flat spot. Now the reason for giving the ring a little flat spot is because the top of the material is curved. And if I didn't do this, rather than the bezel cup sitting straight on top of the ring, it might actually go to one side. And then the stone doesn't show very well. So we're going to help things out by just making sure that there's a nice flat space on top. And since I have the bezel cup handy right here, I can actually test it out by seeing if it will balance on top of the ring, and it does. So I'm good to put this into the pickle pot and move on to my next step. I've taken the bezel cup out of the pickle pot, and what I was mostly concerned about is making sure that the back area or the side that the solder was melted to is free of any oxides or, or corrosion. So what I want to do next is I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to apply flux over the melted solder. Now this flux at this point is a little bit wet and sticky and that's going to work in my favor because what I want to do is I want to balance the bezel cup onto the flat spot that I filed in the previous step. So we're just going to place this here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my ring is nice and straight. I'm adjusting my third hand. I can look down over the top and make sure that the bezel cup is in the middle of the ring shank, or the ring itself. There we go. It's ready to be soldered now. Now you have to be careful if you solder this way because if you're slightly off or if the ring is at an angle, the bezel cup could fall off. Likewise, if you heat this up too fast, what could happen is, just like a pallion popping off when you're trying to solder, this whole bezel cup could pop off. So it's a good idea to make sure that you're wearing shoes, you're wearing an apron or something in case that hot little piece of metal pops off onto you. Okay, so I'm going to light the torch. Now, the trick to soldering is to heat the larger piece first so that the smaller element comes to temperature by the heat being channeled through the larger item. So I'm going to start down here and I'm going to heat the ring. Now, the third hand tweezers, those insulated tweezers, are kind of a heat sink. So they're going to take up some of the heat and suck it right away. So I've just got to keep going back and forth, keeping my flame moving. And you can see how the flux is beginning to like foam up a little bit. If I just hit it with a little bit of heat, it'll relax it and the bezel cup will go right back to where it should be. So if you have your solder pick handy, you can, if necessary, take a quick look and if you need to push things back into place before they solder permanently, you can do that. The trick is to be coordinated and keep that flame moving at all times. Okay, I can
can tell that the ring is slightly annealed because it has gone dull. And I can actually sit down and I can see the side of the ring better and I can see underneath the bezel cup from this position. So if I keep heating this ring and heating underneath that bezel cup, eventually what will happen is that bezel cup will just sit down too. Now if you're using an oxygen assisted torch or a larger torch, this will go much faster. Okay, so I can see that the solder underneath the bezel cup has it's flowed and the bezel cup has sat down. So when I quench this, it shouldn't pop off. Perfect. So now, if you give it a tug, quality control, it's just fine. So we've got a bezel cup soldered to our ring. Next thing I need to do is I need to let this pickle for a little bit, let it clean up, and then we're ready to polish and set our stone. Once your piece is finished pickling, Take it out of the pickle and neutralize it in a solution of water and baking soda. Then, using a brass brush, scratch brush the piece till you get a nice shine. Then, polish the piece, and then you're ready to set your stone. After you've finished cleaning and polishing, you're ready for the final step, which is setting the stone. So, I've laid out the materials that we're going to need. We have our amethyst cabochon the ring with the, cab with the bezel cup attached to it, a bezel rocker, and the ring clamp. The first step is to put the ring back into the ring clamp. Remember, you just want to expose the bezel cup, place the wedge in, and to make sure it's nice and tight, just bang it against the top of the bench. Next, what I want to do is I want to sit down and position the ring so that I'm holding the clamp firmly against the V of the bench pin. Now what I can do is I can bring the stone and place it into the bezel cup. It should just drop right in. If you have problems putting it in, it's too small. And you shouldn't see a lot of room around the outside of the stone either. So now you can see that the bezel surrounds the stone, but we need to, we need to close it down so it holds the stone. So if you imagine a clock, what you want to do is, with your bezel rocker, you want to push to the stone, just right up to it, but not onto it, at the locations where you would have the 12, the 3, the 6, and the 9. And do them in opposition so that the stone becomes centered in the mounting. So I'm going to make the first push. So I'll push onto the stone here. I'll turn it around and I'll push on the other side of the stone in opposition. Now I'll do the other two places. So pushing onto the stone, I'll turn it around, push onto the stone. So now the next step is to actually push a little harder. This first step centered the stone, now we're actually gonna begin this actual setting process. So again, I'm gonna make the first push, so I'll push onto the stone here, turn it around and I'll push on the other side of the stone in opposition. Now I'll do the other two places again. So pushing onto the stone, I'll turn it around, push onto the stone. Now you can see that that stone has gaps in the areas where I didn't push. And the beauty of the bezel rocker is, is that because it's shaped like the rocker of a rocking chair or a hobby horse, it can rock back and forth. So I want to rock these gaps. I'll start at one area where the bezel is already against the stone and rock to the next one. And again, this operation is done in opposition. So let's start over here. So starting at my first point of contact, I rock to its neighbor. Then I'm going to turn the setting around. There. At the next point of contact, I place the rocker and I rock the bezel onto the stone there. You can always rock backwards too if you want to. Now I just need to do the other two gaps. Again, placing it against the stone or the bezel area against the stone and rocking the gap down. 
over to the next section. One left to go. Placing the rocker down and rocking it and pushing the bezel to the stone. So I'm just going to take a quick look here and see if there's any little minor gaps to, to do. You can change the angle. This angle I was working pretty flat. I can come up now and I could just go around the top of the bezel. And I just like to do it all the way around just to make sure that everything's nice and tight. Don't want to get any crud like soap scum or uh, dead skin or anything like that underneath the stone or in the bezel because that will cloud the stone and take away from the beauty of it. There, we're done. So once you're finished, take the wedge out and remove your ring and enjoy it. I hope you have fun making this project. Be sure to check out our other videos and products on the onlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.